All right, so you just saw my newest hand-wired keyboard, the Scotto 34. The cool thing about it, besides the exposed controller and wiring, is that it uses chalk switches. Today, my goal is not only to share with you this new board, but talk about some of the special things I did and issues I encountered. This video will either just show you a cool project or potentially help you build a chalk hand-wired keyboard. Chalk switches are also known as low-profile switches, but that doesn't make it obvious that they use different spacing and dimensions. Normally on my hand-wired boards, I use a three millimeter thick plate, but for chalk, I found that 2.2 millimeters works nicely, with one caveat. The switches hold in place okay, but they're definitely much looser than normal. To remedy this, I simply used a bit of UV resin to glue them in place. The more important thing I want to talk about in this section is the key spacing though. Standard chalk switches fit in a normal 14 by 14 millimeter cutout. However, the keycaps themselves are slightly rectangular. This means that the standard switch spacing of 19.05 millimeters that MX uses will leave gaps between the caps. You can use that MX spacing, but I decided to go with 18 by 17 millimeters as that seems to be the standard for chalk. I was fearful that this tighter spacing would cause muscle memory issues, but to my surprise, it didn't. The difference really is negligible between the two. Now, normally when I hand wire a board, I just mount the controller in the bottom of the case using a recessed section. The problem for this board though is twofold. First, I wanted the board to be as low profile as possible, and when I mount a controller in the bottom, I have to add about three millimeters to its overall height. Secondly, and more importantly, I wanted to do something very different for this board where I expose as much of the components as possible. This led me to the idea of using a transparent bottom and then mounting the controller on top. The bottom was simple enough. I just designed a recessed section into the case and then made a template that I used to cut it out. I didn't record much of this process because it was a massive pain in the ass due to me not having the correct tools to cut polycarbonate. However, in the end, it all worked out just fine, but if I was to do this again, I'd probably pick up a saw of some sort to make life easier. As for the controller, I used pin socket headers to mount it, and I'm a massive fan of this new technique. Not only does this make the controller easily replaceable since it's socketed, it also makes it so you wire the board up a lot cleaner and not have to glue the controller in. The way I did this was by simply measuring the dimensions of the sockets, cutting the dimensions into the case, and then using UV resin to glue them in place. I'll also add that to find where to make the cutout, I measured the width of the controller and then subtracted a quarter millimeter from each side. This works fine for the Pico that I used, but you may have to mess with the offset depending on the controller you use in order to align it properly. Wiring this board was the same as any other hand-wired board I've done, so I decided not to really show the process. If this is the first video you're seeing from me though, I will link a video I made that goes very in depth on how to hand-wire boards. That being said, I did change one thing for this board, and that is instead of using 16 gauge wire, I use 18 gauge. The reason for this is the lower profile of the chalk switches, and I was afraid that if I use the 16 gauge, it would collide with the bottom of the case. The last thing I wanna talk about is some of the issues with the build. These are all probably mostly my fault, but I wanted to mention them just so you're aware if you go ahead and build a chalk board yourself. Firstly, the controller, although being easily replaceable due to being socketed, there are some potential issues with it. The main being that the socket pins are very fragile. I ended up breaking a few while socketing and unsocketing it, leading to me having to re-solder individual pins back on. Also due to its slightly high profile, it's possible the micro USB port will have more strain than usual, leading to a shorter lifespan. This really isn't a massive issue in my opinion though, since Picos are $4 each, and if slash when this happens, I could just replace it. The other thing I want to mention that isn't inherently an issue with this board in particular, is that the case slightly warped when printing. This mostly isn't a problem, but if the board is on a solid surface, it can wobble slightly. I could probably mess with different feet to fix this, but that involves time and effort, and honestly the board works fine, so I'll live with it. The final issue I wanted to point out has to do with the keycaps. Remember earlier how I mentioned that I had to glue the switches in? Well, that's also because the caps themselves are extremely tight. It took me about 10 minutes to carefully pry them off in order to get the B-roll for this video. Luckily, I didn't pull any switches out, but I definitely won't be removing them again anytime soon. I've been blabbering on about this board for a while now, and I'm sure at this point you just want to hear it. But before that, let me just say, these Kale Robin switches are easily in my top three of all time. The short travel distance mixed with the relatively heavy spring, for chalk switches at least, leads to a really nice experience. This board kinda just feels like I'm gliding through words as I type them. These switches also very much remind me of something like the Box Jade, since they both use click bars. Anyway, have a listen. 
So that's my newest hand-wired keyboard, Discato 34. Originally, it was going to be a split board that would use USB-C as the interconnect, but that was kind of a nightmare that wouldn't work the way I wanted, so I scratched that idea. However, if there's one thing I took away from this entire project, it's that chalk switches are incredible. I very much plan on building more boards with them in the near future. That being said, if you did enjoy this video or got some use out of it, how about giving it a like and maybe giving me a sub if this is your first experience on my channel. I make lots of content related to things like this and have many videos coming soon that I think you'll enjoy. Also, just as usual, if you have anything you would like to see, don't hesitate to comment and I'll potentially add it to the growing list of content ideas. Anyway, that's all I have for today and I'll see you next time. Maybe I